What does the Big 12 do next? USC and UCLA are out of the Pac-12, so now it's time for the Big 12 to get aggressive. We're gonna talk about it today, let's do it. Welcome in, today we're talking about the Big 12. Obviously, USC, UCLA, they're gone. They're going to the Pac-12, and now the Pac-12 is more vulnerable than ever. I would also say the ACC is also kind of vulnerable as well as the SEC is kind of looking at some of the schools from their conference as well as the Big Ten. So now is the time for the Big 12 to get aggressive, go out and try to add more talent to the conference. Now, how do they do that? Well, here's what I would say. If you kind of look at the, what the Big 12 has done since OU and Texas left, there's good signs that they're going to continue to stay aggra aggressive, adding BYU, Cincinnati, uh, Houston, and Central Florida already. Now they have an opportunity to continue building. Uh, there were reports this week that Colorado, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, they're all meeting with the Big 12 this week. And while I think it's important that the Big 12 gets aggressive, I think it's equally as important that they stay patient. And the reason for that is because there's a lot of dominoes still to fall. And I also think a more important thing is they need to try to get a meeting with Oregon and they need to try to get a meeting with Notre Dame. I know I said it, right? Notre Dame, the likelihood of that, probably not high, but the Oregon one, it's possible. It's possible for the Big 12 to sell something there that really appeals to Oregon. And so I think it's important that they look at all options. And if the ACC loses some schools as well, there might be some better fits in the ACC for the Big 12 to add. But, 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 just because you stay patient doesn't mean you can't be aggressive and do your due diligence. This conference needs to continue having these conversations and continue talking to a bunch of different schools and figure out who the best fits are while also being selective throughout the process. Now, the reason why I say that is because I think right now they're at a point where they have a lot of leverage and that's something they haven't had in the last year. No leverage really for this big 12 conference at all, just zero. You lose your biggest brands and now it's kind of like, okay, you just kind of have a bunch of parts and, and what now? But I think the biggest thing that they have done is they've stayed together and they've stayed cohesive in one goal, and that is keeping the Big 12 around. And that's why I think the Pac-12 is gonna you know, try to add a Texas Tech or an Oklahoma State. It's not gonna work. The Big 12 is at a point now where it's cohesive, and now they can go out and start adding teams. I think there's gonna be a conversation that the Pac-12 is gonna try to have with the Big 12 about potentially an alliance or a merging of the conference, and that could be a good option you know, if the money works out. But I think it's also just important that the Big 12 just kind of looks at it and goes, well, you know, we could do that, but we could also just take a couple teams from the Pac-12 and just build on kind of this philosophy that they've had, and that's keep the Big 12 the Big 12 and keep growing and keep getting bigger and better, and they have an opportunity to do that. I like the four schools they're bringing in for meetings, uh, Colorado, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State. Those are schools that I think really make sense. They absolutely do. Colorado's been in the Big 12 before. Utah has a natural rival with BYU. And also, I think it's an area of the country that fits in really well uh, with the Big 12. And it's a school that is on the rise. Pretty good at basketball, really good at football. Kind of sneaky underrated as a football program. Uh, the two Arizona schools, I think, have been major targets for the Big 12 for a long time. I think those two, if you were to ask any kind of fan of a team in the Big 12, they would say, Arizona, Arizona State are the two schools that we would want to add outside of the Big 12. You know, just two schools that felt like they fit really well and just would make sense in the conference. And so now getting them in to visit, I think, makes a lot of sense as well. Both are pretty good at basketball. Arizona great at basketball and okay at football. They just need to add more resources to it. I think a big part of the Big 12's kind of philosophy right now is that they care about football, right? They care about basketball. They care about winning. The Pac-12 has not really cared about that. And losing USC and losing UCLA, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough for them to survive. And now the Big 12 has an opportunity to get bigger, better, stronger, more brands. One thing I heard today that I found really interesting was Joel Klatt talking about merging that Pac-12, Big 12 kind of mindset. That I was saying, I think the Pac-12 will probably have that conversation with the Big 12 at some point. 
And I heard him talking about having, you know, 20 teams and you have essentially two tiers. You have tier one, tier two, and it's almost like relegation in soccer. That's what he was saying. And I'm like, why would you do that? Why not just get to 20 teams and not merge 20 team Big 12 and then just play it like a normal conference and become a super conference? And I think that should be probably the biggest goal for the Big 12 in general. And that's trying to be the first team to 20 teams. And yes, I know I said be patient. I want them to be patient. They should be patient. If you look around and kind of see where we're at right now, it's clear the Big Ten is going to get to 20. The SEC is going to get to 20. So the Big 12 has a chance, I think, to kind of sell that to other programs. It's like you go to the ACC and you say, hey, Clemson's going to leave. Miami's going to leave. It seems very obvious. Why wouldn't you want to get ahead of that? And same with the Pac-12. Oregon, Washington leaving, it's inevitable. So why would you not want to get ahead of that, you know, before the rug is caught from under you like it was with this USC and UCLA thing? And so now it's very important. This is a crucial time for the Big 12 Conference to try to make up for losing Oklahoma and Texas. They've already done a good job of it, but now they have an opportunity to get even stronger as a conference. When I opened, I mentioned Oregon and Notre Dame as two schools you need to have a meeting with. I get the Notre Dame one is not realistic, but I do think there are some things that the Big 12 could sell. Uh, I've heard opinions from, you know, offering double the amount of what everyone else in the conference is making just to come to the conference and add a brand like that. I think the Big 12 should be open to that. Why not? Who cares if you got to pay them more? You're going to have a bigger TV deal and everyone else is going to continue making a ton more money by adding a school like Notre Dame. Is it the most realistic? No. Notre Dame, I think, is destined for likely the Big Ten. I think that would be my guess at this moment. As far as the Big 12 goes, though, they need to look at Oregon. And I think they need to do everything they can to try to add Oregon to the conference. And the reason for it is because I think it's the biggest national brand that they actually have a chance at adding. I also think Oregon is just thinking, oh, we're going to get the invite to the Big Ten along with Washington. We're going to have a great time. It's going to be really fun. I don't know if that's going to happen. I think the Big Ten's focus is Notre Dame right now. And while that is going on, I think the Big 12 has a lot to offer to Oregon, especially if they're going to go out and add all these other schools out west, if they go add Washington and uh, the schools that are meeting Colorado, Utah, Arizona, Arizona State. It's a pretty natural fit. And I think for that reason, there's something to sell there, especially since Oregon knows the impending loss of USC and UCLA in 2024, which people don't realize that's coming up really soon. That's just two years away. August 2nd, 2024 is two years away, just a little over two years. And now is the time for them to get proactive, just like it's time for the Big 12 to get aggressive, add to the conference, get stronger, add brands, and really set themselves up for a future in which they could be one of the final super conferences left at the end of it. But for today, this has been Grayson Grunhafer.